crackberry.com. Hey, everybody. This is a grumpy and stressed out Crackberry Kevin coming at you, and I'm grumpy and stressed out because it's that time of year again. Time for the annual smartphone round robin where I'm forced against my will to give up my BlackBerry for the month and try out the competition. At least I'm not in it alone because the editors of our other smartphone experts community websites are doing the same thing with their favorite devices. Round number one, you can see that's me spinning upside down. I'm going to give the Palm Trio Pro a try and my BlackBerry Bold while I packed it up and shipped it off to Dieter at WM Experts. Over the next month, you're going to really want to keep it locked to smartphoneroundrobin.com so you can see who has what, what our thoughts and opinions are on each device coming from different smartphone backgrounds, and most importantly, to see if we actually survive. So last year when we did the round robin, our BlackBerry choice was the Curve 8310. And our Palm product of choice was this, the Trio 680, which ran the Palm OS, and you can see the device itself is a bit bulky and a bit outdated. Compared to this year, the Trio Pro, which is actually built by HTC for Palm, runs Windows Mobile 6.1 Professional Edition, and is a heck of a nice device. You got 3G, GPS, Wi-Fi all in one, um, a little more processing power, some refinements within that Windows Mobile 6.1 OS, and it's, it's a nice device. If the Bold didn't exist, it would be something to look at for sure. Uh, not quite as good as the bold. I'm going to say that up front all around from my perspective, but really nice. We'll take a good look at it today. Left side, we got the volume up down key. Uh, we got a dedicated button for the uh, camera there, which for some reason takes a couple seconds of, of holding down to, to make it pop up. Micro USB port and uh, 3.5 mil headset jack. I like the location of it. I love this dedicated Wi-Fi on off button. And I love this switch at the top for putting the phone, making the phone silent. Uh, just ringer on off. Power button right there. Looking at the back of the phone, you got a two megapixel camera, well-placed speaker port, uh, nice Palm logo there. Uh, the battery cover was tricky for me to learn to get off at the start, but uh, now I'm a pro at removing the cover. You just gotta pop up. You gotta kinda use both hands. You can see how clean it is there. 1500 milliamp battery, that funny silver thing I'll make fun of in a minute. Uh, but again, the battery cover at first, you know, the instructions say push on the lower right corner, but that doesn't do it. You need to use that second hand, put your thumb up on the side and uh, pry it off, but it works. Well designed, holds on really tight. Looking at the front of the phone, you do have a touch screen, 320 by 320 pixels versus the Bolds at 480 by 320 pixels. Uh, it's resistive touch screen, not capacitive like the iPhones or the Storms. Underneath it, you got a whole bunch of buttons, your send and end keys. You've got, instead of a trackball, the, uh, the D-pad, five-way navigation, dedicated start menu and OK button, which is kind of like your back button on a, a berry, and dedicated keys for a calendar and email, which is kind of cool. Lots of buttons, and in addition to buttons, you've got... Oh my god, it's a stylus. I want to stick it through my eye socket. Um, yeah, unbelievable. Apparently, phones still come with styluses, and what makes it worse is sometimes you got to use them. Uh, I really can't stand that. I think styluses are a thing of PDA history and should have disappeared. With the smartphone, it's kind of, to me, means there's work to be done on the OS and the user experience. I don't have a bold with me to compare the Trio Pro to because Dieter has it, uh, so we'll compare it here to the 8800. It's about the same dimensions as the 8800 and the Bold, so it's a pretty good size comparison. Uh, you can take a look at it. I mean, the the, uh, the Bold slash 8800, it's going to be a bigger device all around. Uh, the Trio Pro is really narrow. You know, that narrow, that the narrowness of it makes it awesome in terms of a pocketable device. Makes it a little harder to type on the keyboard, though. It's a very, very tight keyboard. Um, but it's a joy to carry around in your pocket, hold it to your head to talk onto. It really is a phone. Uh, looking even compared to the Curve 8900 here, you can get a good idea of just how small it is. 8900 is a little bit smaller. Um, I, form factor, take your pick. I think the 8900 feels nicer in the hand still, actually. Uh, it's easier to type on. If only it had 3G, uh, the 8900 would be the, the money device, you know, without comparison. But it doesn't, so different category. Heck, let's even compare it to the Pearl Flip here. Totally different uh, genre of smartphone, but... We are comparing the Trio Pro to some Blackberries. Okay, time to take a look at Windows Mobile 6.1 on the Trio Pro. Uh, let's pull it out of standby. Ah, oh, but the one button I want to hit to turn on the freaking phone doesn't do it. On a Blackberry, I always push in on the trackball. Force a habit, that's just what I do. On the Trio Pro, it doesn't do it. Uh, any of those other buttons, you can tap, it brings it to life. Then you click the, the, the center button to unlock the phone. But the one button I want to click doesn't do it the first time. It's driving me nuts. Uh, you use the touch screen and you use the main buttons to, to control the phone. There's a familiarity about the whole device just because if you've used a Windows computer, the naming, I mean, there's a start menu, there's Internet Explorer, there's Windows Media Player. You recognize the things. It's not necessarily the same user experience, 
but at least you can kind of figure out where you got to go to do what you want because the names are so familiar. Um, taking a look, you know, there's a quick tour that came preloaded. I actually used it and, uh, you know, I went through most of the tutorials when I grabbed the phone. You can see I have a couple left to go, but they started to get me uh, familiar with, with the Trio Pro pretty quick. Looking at the Trio Pro's home screen, there's a lot of data presented on it by default. And with Windows Mobile, you have a ton of options to, to skin it however you want to make sure you get the info on your home screen that uh, you want to see on a regular basis. I'm in love with this little application at the top right corner there. It's like your, your task manager slash memory management tool. Uh, it's really cool. So we'll bust out the stylus and, and tap through. But you can see here, um, you know, memory. You can actually see the memory in use and free at any given point and you can actively see changes in it as you, um, you know, you can multitask between applications, but you can also use that button to actually physically close apps down and increase your, your, op your, your application memory, which is awesome. Although tapping accuracy doesn't seem to be that good for me at all the time. And between the stylus and my fingers, I'm never quite sure what I need to be using for, for these kinds of screens. Um, task manager, kind of like a computer again. I mean, it's not the same exactly, but it works. There's a familiarity about it. Let's uh, take a browse around, go into the programs. Some of the things you're gonna recognize from a computer, some are different. Um, Active Sync, now this worked really well for me. It's actually preloaded onto the device. I synced it to the computer with a micro USB cable. Active Sync popped up, it's actually preloaded. I installed it, I got my contacts, no problem onto it and calendar appointments out of Outlook. Camera app here. Um, seems to work pretty well. Right now it's on video recording and just by like clicking left and right you can uh, go to different options. Portrait picture. We'll take, take one of these pictures. That actually lets you do a super wide landscape uh, mode shot. If you take three in a row it'll string them together. Really cool feature. Um, file Explorer. I mean that's the biggest thing is there's an actual file system on this device. Videos, let's uh, see how a BlackBerry video does on the Trio Pro, the good old Speed Racer clip. And it doesn't play. I guess Windows Media doesn't like videos that have been formatted for the BlackBerry currently. Uh, it happens. Let's try something else here. A little uh, Flow Rider. Okay, let's get out of here but again you know having the file explorer system a full out file management system on the device is really awesome uh, let's check out some other apps I mean calculator gotta have a calculator but you can see sometimes the trio pro is laggy I mean that should be bang snap simple native app and uh, it's not always lightning fast I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about Pocket Internet Explorer that ships uh, native on the trio pro because frankly it sucks it's got nothing on the bolds browser and I'm going to upgrade it anyways here to uh, Opera Mobile or uh, Skyfire. So I'll talk about that more in the final review. And, um, you know, kind of maybe we'll just browse through some of the settings. But, you know, the thing I learned last year about Windows Mobile when I was using the AT&T Tilt is that if you want to invest the time and effort into the operating system, you can hack it up and tweak it up so it's very efficient to use and it presents all the info you want in the way you want. It's a very powerful platform, but you got to put that time and effort into it. And it's kind of the opposite approach of BlackBerry, where BlackBerry is all about being efficient and quick to use, you know, grabbing the phone 100 times a day for, you know, a minute at a time to get done what you need to do. And hopefully for next year when we do the third annual round robin, we'll be using a Palm device that actually features a Palm OS versus Windows Mobile on it. I think this is a great transition device for, for Palm, but I'm really excited to see what uh, this Nova operating system will, will be like. Because I think all my little Windows Mobile gripes on the Trio Pro will be addressed by uh, Palm's new OS. Last thing I want to touch on is the Trio Pro's keyboard. It's so narrow at this point that I would argue you're actually better off switching to a Sure type keyboard. If you really need a narrow smartphone, uh, you know, I'm more accurate and much faster on Sure type than I am on this just because it's such a narrow full QWERTY. That's it, the Trio Pro. Very nice hardware, great looking phone, tight little package. Um, something to consider. You know, I think the Bolt has an edge up on it, but hey, I'm a BlackBerry user. Of course I'm going to say that. So, uh, Keep it locked to smartphoneroundrobin.com and let's see where we go from here.